Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. So in this video, we are going to discuss state of serverless. So this is a report produced by a very well-known company, Datadog. So this report is going to help you prepare for your cloud interview as well as your real-world cloud projects. For those of you who do not know, uh, Datadog is a very popular cloud monitoring as a service company. It works with all kinds of cloud services such as serverless, container, virtual machine and more. And Datadog works with many customers and this report has been generated using the actual usage data from the customer. I really like this kind of report uh, where the report is based on real data and real statistics uh, rather than something totally theoretical and based off a lot of assumptions. Uh, with that being said, let's get started. So this report is published in two different parts. I'm going to go through both parts, uh, but I will not go through each and every point. I'll go through the important ones that's relevant for your cloud career. So half of AWS users have adopted Lambda. So this is an important data point. So what this tells you is Lambda now coexists with other technology. So container is pretty hot, but even for the projects that are adopting containers and Kubernetes, they are also using Lambda. Uh, you can trigger Lambda from S3 to process something. You can use Lambda for a periodic task or a short-lived batch job or as an API backend, etc. So as this says, it shows that Lambda is no longer limited to cloud native early adopters or niche use cases. On the contrary, serverless function are now in widespread use across a variety of companies with an infrastructure footprint in AWS. So observation number three in this report, uh, containers users have flocked to Lambda so this might be a little bit misleading. So what this means is containers and lambdas are coexisting. So before, uh, some project will be like, okay, I'm gonna go all containers. Uh, but now it's not the case anymore. They are still using containers, but they're thinking, okay, for this use case in the same project or for this microservice in this project, uh, lambda is better to use. So that's why they're coexisting um, in, in projects. So Amazon SQS and DynamoDB pair well with Lambda. Uh, so this one is super important point. So Lambda along with SQS and DynamoDB are used to create a synchronous architecture which is more scalable and more cost effective. So if you are learning Lambda or if you are using Lambda in your current project, highly highly recommend to use sqs or look into sqs lambda architecture and dynamodb so next observation is node.js and python dominate among lambda users so if you are someone who came from a legacy background who do not know any modern language and thinking about learning a language pick between node.js or python so i would recommend going towards python because beyond uh, the use of Python in Lambda, uh, Python is also used extensively in machine learning and analytics. So down the line, if you want to switch uh, your uh, job to analytics or machine learning, uh, Python will be super handy. Uh, Python scripts are used by a security group, uh, by infrastructure group, by governance group. So it is super useful to learn Python for cloud and DevOps jobs. The next observation is only 4% of functions have a defined concurrency limit. So I'm actually a little surprised by this observation uh, because uh, for massively scalable and burstable uh, projects, you should assign a concurrency limit uh, depending on how many connections your backend database can handle and other factors. Um, so yeah, so in your interview, you actually will get question on Lambda concurrency, like how can you control Lambda concurrency, how to design a massively scalable serverless project, that kind of stuff. 
Uh, but again, yeah, I am a little surprised that only 4% of functions have the concurrency limit. All right, we are back to the recent report. Uh, so if we scroll down, uh, the first observation is lambda functions are invoked 3.5 times more often than two years ago. So this data point combined with the previous data point that half of AWS users have adopted Lambda as well as larger enterprises are adopting more Lambda means that if you go for interviews or working in a project uh, for enterprises, you should learn Lambda. It's not one or the other anymore. Uh, even for the container projects, uh, you use Lambda for different use cases. All right, so moving on, Azure Functions and Google Cloud Functions are gaining momentum. So this is really fantastic news. So a lot of my students ask me that Raj, uh, my company is adopting Azure or GCP, but AWS uh, is the most popular one. Uh, should I learn AWS and ignore uh, Azure or GCP? Now that you see that all the clouds are gaining momentum and you'll have a job opportunity, doesn't matter which cloud you learn, makes your life easier. Uh, because if you like Azure or you like GCP or you like AWS, they all are getting traction for the serverless area. Uh, so this is, this is good. So moving forward, step functions power everything from web applications to data pipeline. So this actually I see in my real world uh, work as well as a solutions architect when I work with customer projects. And I get more questions on step functions now than I used to two years back, even in my same job role. So step function, I will highly recommend you to learn it. And moving forward, Python is the most popular Lambda runtime, especially in large environments. So we talked about this. If you have to learn or if, or if you want to learn one uh, modern language, learn Python. So that's the end of the report. So a little bit of plug. Uh, check out my uh, serverless course in Udemy. Uh, it has pretty good rating as well as a decent number of students. So in this course, I cover all the main points that we talked about in this video and more. So I start from a basic Lambda serverless concepts and then we dive deep into API Gateway, how Lambda can be used as microservices, a small running tasks. We do a real world project. We also learn serverless framework, SAM, SQS, DynamoDB, step functions, etc. Uh, so check it out. Uh, I will give a discounted course link in the description. All right, guys and girls, that's the video. Uh, if you like this video, if you found this video helpful, learn something new, uh, please do all the YouTube stuff. Uh, smash that like button, subscribe, comment, share. Uh, this is still a relatively small channel. Uh, so help, help us grow the channel so that we can do more awesome things. All right, guys and girls, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.